what they tell us. You know what I'm saying? Um, when we talk about or we trace the, the York line, you have what you call the old Yorks and then you have the new Yorks. The old Yorks were all of those Moors or those uh, European Moors that had European blood descent, but still maintained a certain fealty for the old ways. This was depicted in a in a unofficial war that they refer to as the war between the ancients and the moderns. So this war between the ancients and the moderns um, was where modern mythology started to come about. Like a lot of the, the mythos and the, the things like um, giants and dwarves and, and all that type of stuff stuff was predicated upon the myths and them trying to come in and bring in a bastardized version a unifying version of Christianity that strictly was for the peasantry and that peasantry is who after the civil war and so-called integration that they integrated black folks black so-called black folks in with you see what I'm saying which then collectively brought their um a collective let's say generational racial power to us to a different octave because now it had to contest with all of the junk dna for lack of a better word that was thrust into it based upon these forced contracts and these forced uh, uh migrations and interactions with other nations that weren't necessarily down with it so archaeological evidence suggests that the mesolithic people Right, I'm talking about the Yorks, settled in the region of York between 8,000 and 7,000 BC. Although it is not known whether these settlements were permanent or temporary, by the time of the Roman conquest, so this is before Rome even existed, you know what I'm saying? So before the time of the so-called Roman conquest, um, the area was occupied by a tribe known to the Romans as the Brigantes. The Brigantian tribal area uh, initially became a Roman client state, but later its leaders became more hostile to Rome. And as a result, the Roman Ninth Legion was sent north of Humber, where we get Humber, to the Brigantian territory. Brigantian is where we get the term brigade or brigand from, which are all, well, brigade, you know, that's a, that was what, they refer to these Moors armies as. That's why even to this day in in certain army um, protocols and uh, designations, they'll refer to you as the Brigandier General because the brigands, you know what I mean? They were the really one of the first um, non, uh, let's say, Latinized Roman tribe that existed before Rome to actually put up a fight against them when Rome started to establish its so-called conquest. So, um, so with the, with the, um, one second. So with the original queen of England, you know, the, the Asiatic ones, you know what I mean? That's, that's different, but this chick that's there now, these people that are acting as this now were all implants that were put there after World War II. And again, they're not even British. All Caucasian people are basically Germans, no matter where they really come from, because they they truest origins go back to the German side that led to um, the Six Hills, because that's where, you know, they were, you know, that was one of the places that they came into being. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the original Elizabeth, the original so-called nobility black royal family or, or so-called black nobility we know are and were um, melanated people. Now, I would say Moorish in the sense that they were not so-called phenotypical fair European. However, they themselves would have referred to them by whatever national identity that they were representing. So the original so-called black nobility of Europe, reason why all of Europe is one family today is because of what happened prior to all of these successive ways of getting rid of all of the so-called Moorish or darker nobility. And then 
any of those nobilities that wanted to stay and I mean, and flourish, they would have to adopt the new Christian ways, which meant that you had to basically marry a peon, a European wife, and stuff like that. This is where the custom that we see our brothers and sisters play into that started. It came into that. Because that was the only way they would allow you to live. Because the figure, only way they could figure they could trust you is if you had one of their women. But at the same time, they didn't want you to have one of their women because then that represented a genetic break, a genetic break, being that back then they knew who the dominant gene was, or it was openly accepted as such. We don't see the change in that complexion in Europe until again after the fall of Granada towards the 1500s when Shakespeare starts to, Shakespeare and Angela Bassano start putting out these plays that basically show the destruction of the great houses um, as they were being transliterated into these corrupted or amalgamated houses and then were eventually uh, uh, forced out of Europa. They then come over here, a lot of them come over here and basically move into the same places or familiar environments that their people over there had set up for them over here to do so. Which is why most of us here today have English and, and European names. Because they married into our families and in that our titles became theirs and theirs became ours. What people get twisted in that is when they get into striving to settle or try to describe which tribe specifically was which when they were different clans within an, within an imperial system. So just like back then and today, money married money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So because we were the dominant species, it, was, it wasn't it was nothing for us to upgrade a lower species to our level and then based upon certain protocols, um, place them above their own people. But then the offspring of that wound up being somewhat deprived of the basic instruction that they would get if they were so-called full-blooded. You see what I'm saying? There's certain things that's not being translated now to the next generation. And so now they're growing up with the aristocracy and the... the the uh, the money, the prestige, but they don't have the spiritual backing that made that what it is. You know what I'm saying? And then so from there, they then basically just degenerated into what's happening on now. Okay, well, the thing about Prince Henry is that's probably a girl. That's a gender swap individual remember you're dealing with the inverted the inverted gods so their bloodline is corrupted through the luciferian thing so harry is actually probably harriet you see what i'm saying and then marco megan that's probably a guy like i don't like just because it looks like a woman doesn't mean that like that's what it is that's just what it's marketed to us to be just like they marketed her like she was black because so-called black because of her her mother. However, you've never seen her with no black people but her mother. <laughs> so that's not the role that she he she is playing. You know what I'm saying? Um everything is inverted with these people. So when you look at the line, like this is a graph of the of the bloodline thing. Um when you talk about the original nobility, there's a book you could get called Burke's Peerage. And when you read that, or when you go into the, the lines of where these people descend from or ascend from, you'll see that all of them are at their root. Um, let's see. was to show you now they want us to think because we don't understand peerage or they think we don't understand peerage and how royal 
families get married and things like that. They want us to think that um, different, that Caucasian people, for instance, Caucasian monarchy, European monarchy, if that's what we want to call it, that they would create these things, right, and put They would create these things to denote their property, to denote what they actually look like. And then they want us to believe that European or so-called Caucasian people who are into enslaving so-called Moors or whatever you want to call them, that they would, at the same time they're enslaving them, put them on their money, put them in their houses, put them in the embroidery on their tapestries. And their, you know what I'm saying? Like, who does that? You don't go to conk you know what I'm saying like you don't go to some that's like you going to somebody else's crib and then all of the pictures that's there you basically claim as if they're yours <laughs> you know what I'm saying so you could go to Miss Rabinowitz's house and it's all of these Jewish people and then you walk up in there and because you own the house now you're saying that all of those people are your ancestors how does that work <laughs> how are they able to do that and people grown people Asiatic black brown whatever um stick there and accept it like like somehow you can that can possibly happen <laughs> it's burke's period b u r k e possibly s p e e r a g burke's period now the other aspect of peerage is incest which was practiced by um some of the ancient ones coming more from the Mesopotamian line. So certain like what we would call uh, Egyptian, today we would call them Egyptian cultures, um, certain um, highborn Scott, Scotian cultures, because those are somewhat, basically all satellite, a lot of satellite Egyptian cultures would deal with that. You know what I mean? It, it wasn't as, let's say, taboo as it is now. As you can see, they put it in the Bible. Didn't Noah have sex with his daughters? You know what I'm saying? So this mode of money marrying money, money keeping money together with money is not something that's just indicative to capitalism or something that just sprouted up in the modern era, what we call Western civilization and society. That's something that is innate in the, the basis of what we call civilization. And once civilization is established, the bearers of that always have to establish their mark, which is their landmark. There's an actual Bible verse that says when a landmark is placed, one is not supposed to remove that landmark because it represents the covenant between God, the individual, and the land. So our landmarks were all buried and covered up. <laughs> they were mowed over, planted over, and then, you know, mounds become uh hills <laughs> you know what i'm saying and um valley of the kings just become valleys so it's maladapted to think that somebody who would try to control you would then basically give you the means to make yourself whole again they're not going to do that even when we look at the aspects of the genetic backing of what we consider what we've been told the confederacy is like who was running it like who all of that all of that was towards the end of that when we get into the beginning of the Confederacy of the so-called United States of America or the Confederate States, that started way back, man. Way back in the 1500s. Which then culminated with the ascendancy of the white Mamelukes creating a society that would basically be run, that would be militarized with the poor white trash and be, and be governed by the, what they call the Southern planter class who descended from the original planters who were the moors of the original Confederacy. Look, this is Jefferson Davis and his wife. This is the father of the Confederacy. This is the president of the Confederacy. This is his wife.
Now you can look at that and know that that's not a Caucasian woman. See what I'm saying? And based on the pictures, she's probably much darker. But that, whether they tell us or not, was the standard. When they set up that whole octoroon, quadroon, all of that system that they was dealing with. This is them trying to hide the origin of their birth and confuse the issue as to who is who. If I'm going to make you think that I that you that the house that you're in is not your house, then what I got to do is either bump you in the head to make you forget it's your house or create a way to get you to sign it over. Move you from that area so that way, by the time you come back, there's no way that you can contest the ownership. But even if that happens, the individual that's in the house at that point still doesn't own it outright. They only have title, but there's different aspects of title. You see what I'm saying? Let me see. So if this was the mother of the Confederacy, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who are these people? What was really going on? Like this, it don't make sense. You can get a book called Black Confederates. And when you read that book, you start to see that a lot of what they were saying was happening wasn't even happening amongst so-called white people. They were referring to them as white based upon the status that those in the Confederacy was trying to use over people who were foreign born or from the North. Like I live in Andalus, right? And in Andalus, they have a place called Biscayne, right? The term Biscayne is an old Moorish term. Now, okay, address your question. When you say reptilian, you're talking about what? Like the David Icke reptilian thing? Or... The Naga certain serpent people thing. The dirty. Well, they can't be Nagas in that sense because they're not, they don't have total Kundalini Shakti activation. They get it by dealing with us, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, they don't really have that. And so what they do is they ingest they have to ingest aspects of us to make that a a uh a normal thing so that way when it goes down and we see it happening to us we don't take it no kind of way we take it as like a natural thing but okay so like i was saying with the biscayne Right, I live on Biscayne. So this act, this symbol is called the Biscone. The Biscion or the Biscone. Right? But it's an ancient symbol also of what we would call the Ouroboros. But what's interesting is so this is how it would appear in ancient, with the ancient Moors and Aztecs. See how I was coming out the Fez? See the Fez right here? See how I was popping out the top? See it right here? And then here you see it again eating, right? Then over here, when we get the breakdown, the Biscone is of a Latin uh, pronunciation. And in Milanese and Bisa, plural, also known as the Vipira or the Viper, is a heraldic charge showing the Argent. The Argent means like the, the symbol. The Argent, an azure serpent in the act of consuming a human, right? A human, usually a human child, but the human child is usually described as a Moor or a Turk. So this, again, is another symbol, again, of the consuming, the consumption of the, the Moorish entity as a means to move forward through time, to use the information of the Moors to ingest it, but then at the same time, um, feed on their future, which is their children. 
So what I'm also showing you is that the predatory nature that we exist every day in in this country is something that has been going on for the past uh, two centuries. Well, let's say for the past three centuries. But of that, we've been receiving the heavy brunt end of it in the last 243 years, which would be 244 soon. But because we're in the 400th year of the Jubilee, of the freedom of that, that captivity, the 400 years that they're talking about, you understand, represents you in a, in a metaphysical, spiritual way. Because if we really do the math on it, you got to think, if the colonists were subjects of George, who was a more melanated person, up until 1776, that means if they set up Jamestown in 1619, that means from 1619 to 1776, they were directly under George, right? But then from 1776 to about 1789 or 1791, they was in contract under the Moorish Empire, correct? So, if they were being ping-ponged between the Brutish and the Moorish, and the more Brutish and the Moorish were in compact because they were both Moorish governments, we've already proved that. At the time, I'm talking about, where was the 400 years of you being in slavery? We also know that in 1511, those Moors revolted in Louisiana, and that uh, culminated in what happened in 1776 with the Caucasians finally coming in trying to free themselves. Okay? So where did it happen? What the 400 years they're talking about is dealing with you from the perspective of the spiritual so-called children of Israel because there's a breakdown. There's the nation of Israel. There's the children of Israel, right? And then there's the state today of Israel. The state of Israel has nothing to do with the other two. <laughs> That's why Israel is referred to as a state and not a nation. Have you noticed that? They don't even refer to it as a nation state. They refer to it simply as a state. Therefore, if it is a state, it is in a emergency action, which explains why they bomb the Palestinians every day. Just like the United States is in a perpetual emergency action, so it kills and bombs the citizens every day, right? Don't you find it funny that in no other country in the world there are school shootings, like people, mass school shootings. Look it up. When the last time you heard somebody in any of these countries that are even war-torn as they are, when have you heard any of them report people in Japan coming in shooting up the school? When you heard of that? Never. So you're saying that it's a phenomenon that only exists amongst the American school system? <laughs> like this. If I show you all of these images, these are crows, these are Algonquins, these are Shoshone. So you mean to tell me that the pilgrims in the state, right? The so-called tribal, tribal Cherokee thing that's running with the white people running it. You mean to tell me that those people today descend from these people and we don't? Because you're because de we're dealing because we are all enzymes in a petri dish. Because they are cre they the perpetual they have created a bond with this reality to perpetually enforce its uh, insanity.
And those of us who can see the insanity for what it is become the what they call the doomsayers, the doom criers, the ones who actively try to put everybody else that don't care about it onto what's happening, which then forces them to have to accept the that they are living in a gilded cage, which then makes us their enemy because luxury is a form of technology and it's a form of uh, uh controlling technology, meaning that the more luxurious you live in, the less you take things seriously and the more you take things for granted. The nature of the people today is they saying that there were no moors in America during, you know, the time of the Civil War and all of that, and we know that that's false because we was here even before that. And now that we've procured all of the information to show the different maps and all of that to show and prove where Granada was and Spain was and all that, all that stuff happened right here. However, at one point, people are all looking at American history from the perspective of the conqueror. <clears throat> But that history is jaded. This is a, a Confederate soldier, what they call the Zouave from the Zouave card. These are Moors, Algerian Moors who fought in the Battle of Algiers. This is a Moor from the Tunchi. When you talk about the Tunchi people, the, the Tunchi Moors, uh, like Little Wayne called himself Tunchi. Well, that was actually a, a people, the Tunche who was a derivative or, 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 a, or a side band or a side clan of the Tunica, which was another clan or band within the Oachita or the Washita, who themselves have the connection now to those moors out of Palenque and, and La Venta. Who those moors have connections to the ancient seafarers and all of that, going all the way back to when people were speaking Tamil over here. So this is facts. This is not like we making it up. This is this is actually proof of more here in the United States, in so-called America, in Granada, in Andalusia, and it's all the same place. It became different after, and we were educated after to accept what it is now. But it can only be what it is now based on what we have forsaken it to be then. You understand? Okay. So because we still haven't been able to answer the question, well, if they were under the jurisdiction of George from 1619 to 1776, then under the Moorish Empire from 1776 to 1791. And even George, at the time that the British was ruling, they were still in conjunction with the Moors. They still had treaties with the Moors. Let's prove that. This is from a book called The Englishman, the Moor, and the Holy City. French Empire was on land up until Napoleon here. And then they started to move it, Hispaniola over there, in which Bookman and them was transported to Hades. Hades mean hell. Not to us, but to them. Hades was the underworld. And that's where they sent all the French Moors that wasn't with the change up. That was rebelling against the mestizos and all of them that was in there. From there, because remember, prior to the French running it, the Spanish had it, right? Then the United States. And for a brief period in between that, Britain had it. Uh, let me see, one second, John.
Do I have any questions? This is from the book, The Englishman, the Moor, and the Holy City. No one understood why the delegation was in England, talking about the Moors, because the queen was certainly not telling both the Moroccan Sultanate and the English crown, uh, was certainly not telling, and both the Moroccan Sultanate first and the English crown second were determined to mask their real purposes on by pretending the visit was a trade mission. The queen was in fact quite tempted for a time by the war proposal, and one of her advisors noted, Her Majesty, in using the King of Fez, doth not, doth not arm a barbarian, see, the Moors are barbarians, against a Christian, but a barbarian against a heretic. Meaning, if you hook up with the Moors, you wouldn't be going against Christ, you would be going against, you would, by Linking up with the Moors against the Spanish, you wouldn't be going against another Christian. You would be going against a Christian heretic based on what they did to the Moors. I'll get into the methods towards the end of how you can start to verify. Um, Morocco was angry at Spain, not only because the Spanish had seized Moroccan's land, Moroccan lands in Andal Andalus, over here, and dealt appallingly with Muslims there, but because the Spanish were continually capturing Muslims to serve as slaves in Spanish colonies in the Americas. <clears throat> Sultan Abdul Ahmad al-Mansur was serious about his plan with English ships and Barbary horses. They could stand a good chance and Spain could be overthrown forever. No one knew of this proposal, but a small elite around the Sultan of Morocco and Queen Elizabeth of England who would eventually reject the suggestion, but relations between Morocco and England were extremely good. That's why when we read the other book in Morocco as it is, it talks about how the Sultan of America gave Queen Elizabeth the elephant that was bigger than the one that the Sultan of Africa gave. Again, showing the jurisdiction over who was running America and the compact between America and Britain at the time when they say that we was allegedly enslaved. But how could that be when we, the Moorish peoples, and those people who identify with that, were at this perpetual war with each other through Spain, but at the same time held treaties against it all to keep us from overlapping who we had beef with? See, we, we think of things in the context of today, countries, nations, and states. Back then, it's all empires, kingdoms, and dominions. So your empire technically is whatever property you own outside of your own place where you domicile. You understand? Therefore, the empire or the imperial jurisdiction then lies within the noble or the noble, the nobleman and the noblewoman who actively extends the jurisdiction. The governing state, whatever state that is, is supposed to uphold the law in real time by acknowledging your position. However, because our communities are fragmented, you see, and we haven't localized a government that's based in our natural custom, we are trying to force a round peg into a square hole. You know what I'm saying? So again, how are you in beef with these people or enslaved by them when this is saying that you was traveling back and forth and were a negotiator with them? Yes, because if we trace it now, take it all the way back to like what you said, the surrender of Granada. Now we understand that all of the treaties that came after are based in that because that was the 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 place that held sway over the lands here <laughs> because it was over here <laughs> you know what i'm saying <clears throat> but the goal is to keep us in a dispossessed form so if we was so if somebody was to ask you, okay, well, what was the last 
king of Egypt. You know, they're going to say Ramses or whoever. You know what I'm saying? But if you was to ask them, okay, well, who was the last king of the Peruvian Empire? It's crickets. You see what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so how we know all of this about the other, that's like you knowing what's in your neighbor's refrigerator more than you know what's in your own. How you do that? How you expect to eat? What's in your fridge? You can't. Because everything you're doing is based on what this dude do. So they have masked this as democracy. As everybody having a say. But they also tell you that there's something called the electoral college that gets rid of anything that they don't like you saying. So which one is it? But then they say that the rule of law rules everything. But if the rule of law is imbalanced, then it is not law. If it does not provide remedy for the people, if the law is one-sided and it goes from only protecting these people and these people can be slaughtered every day in the street or eaten or both, then there's something flagrantly wrong in the society. So like I said, who is the last king of the Peruvian empire? Oh, if you ask him more, he's most likely going to tell you Afa Balabia. <laughs> See what I'm saying? What was the last known battle that the Moors fought other than the the uh, battle on, on the Sea of Galilee, which we call Lake Erie? Oh, that was the Fort Negro in 1816. In the evening, in the evening, a deputation of chiefs went into the fort and demanded its surrender, but they were abused and treated with the utmost contempt. The black chief heaped much abuse on the Americans and said he had been left in command of the fort by the British government. See that? <laughs> and that he would sink any American vessel that should attempt to pass it and he would blow up the fort if he could not defend it. The chief also informed me that the Negroes had a red flag and that the English Jack was flying over it. The question that must be answered then, were these people former slaves? No. How could they be slaves? And they actually fly in an actual red Moorish flag banner. They can't because they weren't that. They were Moors defending their territory in league with the British Empire because the British Empire was under the jurisdiction of the Sultan because of all of the generations prior to that of the British sending their children to learn at Cordoba in the Moorish lands. That's how they found out how to get back over here. So when the Spanish came through, they messed up the relationship. And that set everything off. But again, they'll call it Fort Negro, but that's probably what it wasn't called. <laughs> That's just what they're saying it was called. And that's 1816, after the War of 1812, after the great New Madrid earthquake of This is from Dr. Ben. <laughs> it is not strange that it was the same Moors mentioned above and became the first African so-called Negro people to be enslaved by so-called Christian European, the forerunners to the European America of Spain and Rome, and with so-called Western world of the Americas, which later became the Western Hemisphere. For it was most revered later Bishop Barthon de la Casas and his Pope in Rome who had the Moors that refused conversion in European style Christianity in Spain and sent the Hispaniola, see, Haiti, see, in 1503 to 1506, and began the infamous and most bestial form of cultural, physical genocide, the entire history of mankind. 
So that means that the so-called peoples that was imported from so-called Africa weren't. They were imported from mainland America, i.e. Spain, i.e. the Moorish Empire, and sent to Haiti, so-called Hades, the underworld, right? Because it's below the mainland, right? And then put under physical situations and then were forced to become Christian. That's why Bukman, the Muslim, was the one who initiated the revolution by teaching them to read not only uh, uh, English, but Arabic when he initiated or helped initiate the so-called revolution. So, you see what I'm saying with the history thing? It's all, they got it all thing and you got to like put it together. When you're the more, you, you're almost like a genetic forensic uh, psychiatrist or psychologist. You're just going through the pathology of the lie to basically piece together based upon the, the dates and the timing and how things are aforementioned. Let's see. This is from another book, Man, God, and Civilization, which says the Islamic culture of the Middle Ages is customarily referred to as Arabic, but the fact is the Arabs were a minority in the so-called Arabic world and that their chief contribution was the so-called Arabic language. This matter has been judicially explained by Professor D. Graft Johnson. <laughs> that book was written by John G. Jackson, bless the dead. So all of this was put in a study that was generated by all of the so-called scientists of the world, the, the leading geneticists and scientists and all of that, that basically um, established What we're talking about, and this there was you can you could actually order this. It's called the Global Patterns of Linkage of Disequilibrium and the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Origin. And when you get into this thing, um, especially after you do a DNA test or whatever, and you get the psych the scientific uh, dissension done from it, the legal dispensation done from it, scientific, you will see that it basically reduces the population, the global population into two types. Those who are frozen at a six degree level of, of uh, universal intelligence with the capacity to excel beyond what we perceive as human capability. Okay, so we talk about Superman and man and all this type of stuff. This is what this is uh, uh, surmising. It's basically saying that Everybody from a certain parallel was on a certain level. So everybody that was not melanated was on a sixth level. Whereas everybody that was melanated that had a West African, Western African, or Northwestern African dispensation within the DNA helix excelled nine and above. So this would explain this image I'm showing you here and why they're into devouring us the way that they do in the capacity that they've been doing it and the frequency that it's been lifting up because they're genetically out of here <clears throat> and humanity the so-called X gene whatever you want to call it the God particle the junk DNA is activating us in such a rate that it is bypassing all of the parameters that they've set under old Doctrines like Rex 84 and um, Global 2000 and all of that type of stuff that we grew up watching that now through people like Alex Jones want to make us think now that we're crazy because we watched it. Because what they're going to do with him is try to come out and be like, oh, he's going to come out and be like, oh, I had a mental illness. So all of that stuff I was dealing with before. So now based on him having the illness, they'll diagnose it as like Alex Jones syndrome or some shit and then 
this is how they'll now try to outlaw anybody asking questions about what's actually really happening. You see, everything in the society is about keeping us at bay. Think about it. Like, look, look, at, look at it like this. This is how you know it's all a lie. When they talk about progress and things like that, they're only talking about it from the perspective of who is progressing. Okay. One second. By the way, that image I showed of Queen Elizabeth allegedly is the real one. Now, there's a fake cover story out on that image that says that it was created by some uh, British film photographer who wanted to do like a piece to kind of whatever show them in that. But um, that, again, that's the cover story. <laughs> that was actually her and they just, you know, you know what they do. However, the problem with living amongst them or with them or around them is that there is, you have no direct protection <laughs> from them. You think what I'm saying? People think that police always existed. No, they didn't. That is a modern apparition that all developed out of slave catchers, slave catching. So it's not even based really in a military situation. It's based in more of a bounty hunter type of situation. These are all of the acts that came after the fall of Granada that basically in whatever parts went to inhibit those of us that wasn't going to conform to this thing about not being Moors. And so they tried to put it and jurisdiction of that. So it's just like it was now. So in some cases in the early thing, right after the initial wars, people were being forced by, by gunpoint and, you know, sword and lance and torture and all that. Then after a generation of that, you get their children who were growing up in war camps. And now those children now are fighting back still only when they get older. But then you get a whole another heap of them that is doing the opposite because they don't want to get killed naturally. And in that, now they put them in the Moors Indian charity schools to then give them whatever the new religion that they're trying to force them into while taking the other people, the, let's say Native American Siberian types, and then giving them uh, like a derivativized version of the natural culture that these Blacks was given. You see what I'm saying? So, okay, you're going to speak this language, but you guys aren't. You see what I'm saying? You're going to be Black. You're going to be this. So, so look, 15, 1524, Black Code, 1740, Negro uh, Act, North Carolina, 1774, we created this, the Free National Constitution in uh, Mecklenburg, <clears throat> 1804, 1806, the Ohio Registration Act, the Migration Act, 1807, Maryland Residence Law, 1830, Louisiana Expulsion Law, 1836, D.C. prohibits African-Americans for free trade, 1837, South African curfew law, 1857, Dred Scott. <clears throat> in 1861, Tsar Alexander, the Moor, frees all of the serfs, the white people in Russia. So guess where they all came? <clears throat> right here in 1863. That's when you seen the gangs in New York when the niggas was getting off the boats and they was being talked to and they basically put uniforms on them and put them right back on the boat to send them to fight the Civil War. This is where the armies came from. <clears throat> all this is how all these Europeans got over here. Because the Tsar freed almost 2.2 million of them who was living out there in the cold, you understand? In the in the in the in the holes, in the foothills, Siberia and worse. So again, put them all on boats and then they came here and then Lincoln used them as, as soldiers and them in the Civil War, which was against Rome not against the South, which we'll show in a minute, prove in a minute. Yes, but what I'm also showing you in all of these dates, 
while all of this was going on, you do know that the treaties that existed that protect you as more protected you from all of this. And not all blacks at the time that was doing this was was um, under this. Everybody loves the Buffalo Soldiers, but think about what they did. <laughs> think about who they was really fighting in this context. Me and you. <laughs> because the West was all Mauritania. That was all ancient Mauritania and lands that belonged to the Moorish people. All of that Mexico stuff. That was the lands that they wanted. And they turned them lawless by sending these wild Caucasians in there, Daniel Boone, David Crockett, all the rest of these niggas, Wyatt Earp, all the niggas in there to go destroy the towns and then set up provisional towns and then turn those into corporations. Ain't that what they did? <clears throat> Look, all of this going all the way up. 1870, 1871, 1873, 1874, 1876, 1877. So when was you ever as so-called black people free? If you was under all of this, and you mean through all of this, so-called African-American people still had the means to maintain a generational cycle to get us here. Think about that, man. Because before this is the fall of Granada, <clears throat> which then ushered in 300, almost 400 years of war, which then led to the war of the Barbary states and the Barbary powers. And then after those wars stopped, that's when they started going west. You think that's a coincidence? <laughs> after they stopped all of the Barbary wars on the sea and all that, that's when they decide they're going to go in. These are the Turks. These are the Osman Ali's. These are the Moors. But in this picture, you would think he is the Sultan. But he is. This is Mohammed II. Him. To the left. <laughs> they have a reprint of the same picture. And everybody in the picture is looking at him, including the dude on the horse. But these are Moors, you understand? And the Moors were Turks. And they had a global, we have a global empire that's still there. However, it was abandoned when we were forced to abandon for whatever reason where we came from. You think it's a coincidence that 30, 70% 30 of the land in the United States, North America, is on one side of Mississippi, 70% is on the other side. And over there in Egypt, 30% of the land is on one side and 70% of the land is on the other. That's a coincidence? So with, with circumstances and topography and cartography like that, it's easy to supplant one place to another. That's right. That's right. They know. They all know, bro. <laughs> we the ones farting around. So like I said, based on this, this global patterns thing, when you get this, this is something we all should get and go through with your children because this added to your DNA actually acts as a, a 
you know, exhibit like more to the to the core of what it is we represent. They only tested so-called Caucasian people, Asian people, Mexican people, these people, and they didn't test anybody black over here because they basically assume they basically took the assumption that you know because the you know this is anything west of Mali was was West Africa. You see. They had to do it because we basically have similar DNA. And then ours is even different than the Africans. It's similar, but you know, melanin, the chlorophyll in the plant may work different in one plant than it does in the other. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I was talking about the, the tartary and all that being over here. This is from another study from the St. Louis Medical Review. There were many Indian tribes of Indians at the time of the discovery of the Western Hemisphere who are thought by scientists to be belong to the Negro race. Such were the uh, Ottomies. The Ottomies? <laughs> like the Ottomans? <laughs> In the Western Hemisphere? Okay, the Ottomans of Mexico, meaning the Moors of Mexico, the Ottoman Turks of Mexico, the Caracoles of Haiti, which is which is Hispaniola in again southern Mexico, Louisiana, as well as Haiti and all that today, the island, the Aragados and the Cutara and the Avaros of the Aranco, of the Orinoco, Orinoco, excuse me, the Mateas of Brazil the Manabes of Quito, and the Chuanas of Darien. Now, you know, Darien and Dorian is the same thing. And the Dorians were a group of uh, so-called semi-Egyptian people and what Peloponnesian people from what we could call Greece today. The Negroes figure with the frequency in most remote traditions of Peru and other American peoples. These men were little and black and lived in groves and woods. See? The gnomes and the fairies and the elves, you see? <laughs> the origin of their nation to an Indian with two wives. Who's that? One a Negatus who lived on the shores of where? Tataracuna. <laughs> Tataracuna. And the Kuna people are a tribe in, you know, Panama. My queen is, is Kuna. Uh, to this race is referred some ancient skeletons of peculiar structure, very distinct from those of the red American race. The autochthonous Negro race <laughs> who dispersed remains were encountered by the conquerors upon the upon was founded latter the so-called American red race. That's us, y'all. New facts and discoveries will doubtless confirm the position of the primitive American population was a Negro race. Drop the mic, it's done. And it says that these so-called Negroes were Moors who were Ottomans. <laughs> and I just showed you the Ottoman Turks, right? I just showed you them. Can you, can you just say it? The Ottomans of, of Mexico. So you mean to tell me these these Mexicans today is, is these people? <laughs> That's what we saying? No. Oh, we're those people. The so-called people that look like us that's in Mexico is the original ancient Mexicans that wasn't from nowhere else. That, that's our brothers and sisters that's catching the same hell that we catching. Only thing they call them Afro-Latino or Afro-Mexican or whatever. Africa was largely depopulated after the last pole ship. Negro, excuse me, Negroes, one of 12 tribes of Mu, settled largely in the Central America. That is why we can find huge Negroid heads. See? Many thousands of years old here in the jungle. Other Negroes managed to survive the New Guinea and Southeast Asia after Mu was destroyed the cataclysmic pole ship 24,000 years ago, right after the last Quran. Of course, anywhere in the South, the people look like us because that's where the civilization started. No civilizations start in the North. It's too cold. <laughs> The 
the people that wind up in the north usually are banished from somewhere and wind up in the north and then want to go to the south and take their land. Because in the coal, all you can do is work with coal material, iron, coal, see what I'm saying? Steel. See what I'm saying? In Egypt, what they was dealing with, gold, silver, you know what I'm saying? Quicksilver, um, platinum, rhodium. See what I'm saying? This nigga King Tut had a meteorite blade. It's still active now. If you put a Geiger counter to it, this should still go up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It made it out of a meteor. Africa was largely depopulated after the last pole ship about 10,000 years ago. Seven to 8,000 years ago, so-called Negroes, Moors, from Central America migrated into the area around Nigeria and began to populate the area of Africa. That's why Africa is a Latin word, because the people who spoke Latin named it that when they got there and settled. So it's not an out of Africa situation. It's an into Africa thing. Because all the data saying it was all over here, because remember, it's one landmass. So at one point, it's possible to use the oceans like rivers and get to one place to the other. Walter was reading The Ancient Kingdoms of Mexico by British historian Nigel Davis, a well-known critic. And Davis finally rejects any theories of the Phoenicians, Egyptians, Chinese Vikings, African sailors, or anyone else ever reaching Mexico by boat. Yet, unlike historians, he readily admits that the all Mexican are Negro. <laughs> See what I'm saying? While the Asians began settling in Madagascar and East Africa, the Asians come from a group of people today called the Khoisan. Look them up. They're the original people of South Africa, which is actually a Zania. <laughs> you see? So imagine we have a society, but we're referring to these places by the names of what our ancestors referred to these places as. You see? And not what the conquistador monk set up for us to call them so that way we never speak it in our own language. So if I say Afa Baliba, we say, oh, let's have a Afa Baliba day. We know exactly what that is. But most of our people don't. But if I say, hey, let's say I have a King Tut day, everybody know what that is. That's not cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's not, that's, that's not cool. Cause then we're always, labeling ourselves based on somebody else. So with the Bisconia, like I showed you, the serpent eating the moor or eating the moorish child, that represents them eating the future. Or, or you know what I mean? The snake eating its tail. The moors or so-called Indians on the eastern seaboard of the United States were a maritime people and were the same moors found on the other side of the Atlantic, on the coast from the southwest Africa all the way up to England, Ireland, Scotland, Denmark, etc., in fact, the people called the Danes and Vikings were actually originally Moorish navigators. This is from David McRitchie's book, Ancient and, Brit Ancient and Modern Britons. And I told you the war was between the ancients and the moderns. So he was basically on the side of the ancients putting the work in. He also did another book on all the fairy, all the mythology stuff. He did a whole another volume on that and broke how all of that down was all based on Moorish science and and the people who actually lived there before St. Patrick kicked all the snakes out. So that's what I'm saying about the language. They got us all wrapped up in aspects of stuff that is not native to what we define ourselves as. So when we say, for instance, um, like when Shakespeare said to be or not to be, 
to be a human, to exist or not to exist, is the question being brought to the rest of humanity as it's now spiraling into this new form of control through Rome, specifically. Britain was never really a friend to Rome, but it fell under the papacy when one of the kings didn't fulfill his obligation. And then they seized the opportunity to force everybody from that, all the kings from that point on to pledge that. That's why they eventually set up the Church of England to break away from that. And why they let other Moors like Martin Luther and the rest of these niggas establish different doctrine to be able to uh, fight against the uh, Venetian back, uh, Roman backed Sabaean slash Ethiopian Roman thing that they was pumping on everybody. Because again, the mothers, the original mothers of Rome were the rape women of Sabaea who were raped by Romulus and them to produce the, the first generation of what they call the new Roman state. And they, Sabaean people who at the time were under the jurisdiction or were also in trade with the Latin people by which they both adopted their language from another group of Moors, a Latin-speaking people called the Etruscans, whose nobility came to be known as Gaetulian, and those Gaetulians became the, the people we call the Habsburgs and them type of people. From Ballantine's Law Dictionary 1948, human being is defined as follows, a sea monster, from the same dictionary, a monster is defined as a human being by birth, but in some part resembling a lower animal. Hence, human rights are not enforceable. Another example of semantic deceit in legalese. You see, all of that is based on the papal bulls that came after the surrender of Renata when they wanted to break up the land while still placating those that was willing to play ball with them. So Abraham Lincoln, at the time that he came into the existence, remember a couple of months before, years before, he just defended them all by getting him out of prison because they were trying to define him as a Negro, which was another land grab. Think about it. All of the people that they lynched, all of the people that they killed, all of that stuff, what happened to all them people land when they drove them off? Where did, who, who took control of the land? The slavery that we talk about slavery didn't start until after the 13th Amendment was established. Remember, slavery is illegal, but slavery as a punishment by a criminal is that. So if we can't criminalize them for being Moors, but we can criminalize them for being Negroes. And so the way we do that is to get them to be more Negroes than Moors. And in doing that, we take ancient tenure of the land from them because now as minors, under their own laws of the republic, they have to abide by it. Remember, they said that Lincoln was a Melungeon, right? Okay. So this is Abraham Lincoln. So you tell me who he talking about. Yes, the United States took the land in trust for Rome at the behest of the northern industrialists who themselves were backed by, at that time, um, took the money from the Bay's of Algiers, the day of Tripoli, and the Sultan of Morocco, and established a holding company. Basically, took the organic constitution of 1783 and then basically adapted it by 1787, which then led to the cease of all the conflict. And so now they could formally do business on behalf of the Moroccan emperor, but they still had to pay the money to Britain. That's what the capitulation of Cornwallis. Who wins a war and then has to pay the loser money? 
Think about it. They had to do that because that was the, the trade-off between Morocco and Britain. You understand? Because we have to get out of thinking that Britain at this time, again, we just shown a proof, they all was Moors. These is all black people. Under the British Empire is the serfs. You understand? The white people. The white plantation slaves. And then analogous to that are those Moorish indentured servants that up until the switch up had a certain degree of rights. At this time, Britain is the 13 colonies under George. Britain is anything that George owned at the time. You understand? And anywhere that's at. Empires, kingdoms, dominions. But here in America, it's the 13 colonies because he's in league, see, with the Delaware Moors who were connected to the Algonquin. But then after him, Charles, he then becomes emperor of the Inca as well as the emperor of Spain, Britain, and um. Portugal or something like that. This is Abraham Lincoln. As long as God gives me the heart to feel and a brain to think and a hand to execute my will, I will devote it against the power that had, which has attempted the machinery of the courts to destroy the rights and the character of the American citizen. Not the Moors. But there is a thing which is very certain. It is, if the American people could learn what I know of the fierce hatred and generality of the priests of Rome against our institutions, our schools, and our most sacred rights, and our dearly brought liberties, they would drive them away tomorrow from amongst us or would shoot them as traitors. The history of the last thousand years tells us wherever the Church of Rome is not a dagger to pierce the bosom of a free nation. She is a stone on her neck and a ball to her feet <coughs> to paralyze her and prevent her advance in the ways of civilization, science, intelligence, happiness, and liberty. I do not pretend to be a prophet, but, through, but though not a prophet, I see a very dark cloud on our horizon. And that dark cloud is coming from Rome. It is filled with the tears of blood and it will rise and increase till it flanks and it will torn the flesh of lightning, followed by the fearful curl of thunder. Then a cyclone such as the world has never seen will pass over this country, spreading rain and desolation from north to south. Now, the, where, where did he mention? <laughs> where did he mention that? Where did he talk about slavery and and um, free and Negroes? You hear anything about that? He's talking about the American citizens. Who's that? And how could it not be when he just got one off out of court doing the same thing? So again, that whole civil war thing, slavery thing, the way that they pumping it, that's a lie. That was helped and and uh, put out there through a hundred years of slave narratives being brought to us by people who want to keep this cycle going because they in bed with these people. Exactly, bad L's. So we, again, they got us thinking we all came from Africa. We all this, we all that, and we have 
some of that in us. But when we say Africa or Western Africa, we have to be specific. Because the same way if I came to your house and you were allergic to peanut butter and I had to give you a, a medicine with that had maybe a peanut butter enzyme in it and you get sick, that's my fault. But the way that they got it is they got us taking medicine, right, and stuff like that, that is actually the total opposite. The the food, dietary chart, they still got milk and, and cheese and all that as like as a healthy diet. Like they got us bugging. They had they would they would put milk on it on a TV show, they put the cereal with the milk and the juice. Like you could drink both of those together and not get sick. You see what I'm saying? So they genetically are always trying to just alter the genetics of the people to inhibit what is naturally there by using the fact that they want us to believe that everybody is created equal. But at the time that they wrote that, they was trying to get out of that deal by the people who actually freed them. I mean, technically beer is vegetarian, right? It's, it's hops, it ain't, you know what I'm saying? So are french fries. You dig? So it's the moderation. And what you do with all that. This is from the book Delaware's Forgotten Folk. The fear of a Negro mass uprising spread through Delmarva Peninsula. Delmarva is one of the Moors one of the Moorish armadas landed in the 1600s. Um, in Delaware, they made a law forbidding them from using firearms, right? And assembled together 10 p.m. denying the non-resident blacks the right to preach. The law pertaining to the sale of ammunition was amended in 1851 and again in 1852. The latter act was invoked in the case about to be described. The case seemingly originated in the fight of intolerant white neighbors, although the court records are vague on this point, it said that the mixed bloods that Nathaniel Burton, a white landowner in Indian River 100, instituted a suit against a storekeeper. A search was made, and the court records in Georgetown corroborate this fact, but without success, the indictment slips from 1855 are missing. Although the indictments for the other years are on file, nevertheless, it is clear that insidious forces were at work at a time to compel all Moors and Indian descendants, regardless of their complexions or status in the community, to accept the classification as Negroes. Those who instituted the suit resented the, store, the storekeeper's independence and his unwillingness to bend to their will and submit to the rule laid down for Negroes. So, as we know, the Mauritanian peoples, the Moorish peoples, and their Indian associates are the ones that held sway, but specifically the first two. And that Indian was used in the 1600s and flipped for Moorish. And that none of the Indian tribes mm. and treaties were honored because those treaties that were entered into after them under the designation of Indian was just as flimsy as anything that they did under the term human or civil rights. Islam? The title of Indians to submerge the lands in Lake Michigan never had been recognized and further that went that the rights relinquished when the Aborigines voluntarily left the land. So they flooded the land and then when they left, they said they abandoned it and now it belonged to the United States. Islam. In one suit, one of the three Indian tribes, the Ottawas, the Chippewas, and the Patawato, and Patawatis, Patawamis, sought to recover the land along the lake front row now occupied by a railroad company. In another suit, the Indians sought to restrain the South Park Board from proceeding with improvements along the lakefront, where much of the land is being reclaimed. So that's what's happening 
universally. I'm showing you that this has always been the case. Moors have always been from the fall of Granada to now, or even from the fall of, of Jericho, when Joshua brought the walls down, to now, it's always been the same thing. It's always been the same fight. People trying to call us something else, and then if we go along with it, we are now abandoned. So when you talk about the leprechauns and, and all of that, all of those people come from a people called the Tuat, Tuat Fedan. And the Danites, again, were a derivative of the Canaanites. And the Canaanites, we know, are Phoenicians. And the Phoenicians, we know, are Carthaginians. And the Carthaginians, we know, are Aetolians and Etruscans and Peloponnesians and, and uh, Almex and everything else. See what I'm saying? Exactly. And because we were now branded as Negro, Black, Colored, African, and now being put under the, the idea that we were from somewhere else, how could we claim title? And then after the successive generations of us being formally Americanized, you see, that's why Noble Juwali and them is so hard, was so cold. Because not only did he come with the way of life, but he came a way to enforce it in a manner by which it was that. How could the Kingdom of Morocco be, be the real place when the place here in Morocco was founded in 18, uh, 1856. Excuse me, maybe even before then. How could Algiers that's founded here in 1748 be the same Algiers they was talking about during the Battle of Algiers back in the 1700s, when that place over there was still a part of uh, Egypt or Tunisia? You see what I'm saying? There is also strong reason to suggest an African presence in the ancient Ireland we have, for example, the legends of the mysterious sea rovers, the Fomorians, who had a stronghold on the Tory Island off the northwest coast. The Fomorians, shrouded deep in mist, came to be regarded as sinister forces in Irish mythology. They used to battle with the Tuatha-Dan, and the Tuatha-Dan and them eventually merged. And then um, when Scotia came to Scotland, that's when all of the so-called warring tribes of the ancient ones over here the Latin speakers, and then the ones, excuse me, the Hebrew speakers, Latin speakers, and then the ones over there that's speaking, still speaking elements of like Tamil and, uh, uh, you know, some of the ancient dialects basically merge. And then from there, we get places like Carthage, these cosmopolitan, Neapolitan type of cities that can give us what we call the uh, ancient world. The Bronze Age. You know what I'm saying? Like, what color is bronze? Like, <laughs> and so the United States, like I said, in a succession of wars, all those wars that they talk about, wars with the Indians, the Indian Wars, these Indians that's claiming they're descended from those people from those wars are the ones that picked up the fight or who got screwed over after they accepted the Indian Citizenship Act. So by all means and purposes, they're all United States citizens themselves. That's why the United States can give them quasi-sovereignty. Uh, because in order to be an Indian, the way that they got it set up, they you got to be recognized by the federal government. Their i.e., the federal government determines who's Indian or not. So how could that happen if the United States federal government is a isn't even a, a living entity that's like the united states saying okay you're you're a african you're a this you're a that they can't do that they gotta leave a box there and if you check it boom but if you check the boxes that apply to you see what i'm saying with the actual designation in your hand what it is you have access trust in all of whatever those races are supposed to represent that's why, again, you can be of so-called African descent, but then have an English name. You know what I'm saying? So when they talk about the fall of Jericho, this is Jericho Rakara. This is the Jericho they talk about. <laughs> and when you go to this place, there's a giant, well, there's giant walls there. <laughs> that's sunken into the water. But this is in Brazil. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's right out, it's right around Fort Talazia.
Here you go. And the high priest of our new order moors. You see how it all comes together? We're not making that up. <laughs> That's how it comes together. So when we talk about the fall of Jericho or the, the coming of that, this is why we can say it all happened over here. Because this is the Jericho. This is the ancient Jericho they talk about. This is the Jericho in the Bible they talk about. I ain't talking about that place over there. This is northern Illinois, they done found this. This is from the so-called over the Egyptian 20th dynasty. This is the same, another joint they done found in, in uh, Acajacla, Mexico. Look at this, man. This is why everybody always coming over here. This is the original garb of the Ku Klux Klan. Look, that's a crescent and a star, right? <laughs> think about that. Why do you think they have a book called the Chloron? This is all about land theft. This is all about taking land from people. Again, these are the same when they talk about the last of the Mohicans. The Mohicans, the Mohagans, the Mo the uh, Mohammeds, the Mecca Indians. How do you explain these people? How do you explain these people not being Moors, but they wearing turbans and fezzes and referring to themselves and, and the last chief of the Cherokees, the real Cherokees, being a Moor who practiced Ramadan, named, to the point where that's his name, Ramadan and Bin Wati. What, what's up with that? These are the three chief, last Moorish chiefs that um, are spoken of in the Clock of Destiny by C.M. Beck. If you look at old pictures on the on the lawn uh, with Calvin Coolidge, when they signed it, he's standing there with the crescent and the star on his chest. <laughs> this is how the Nape used to dress. These are moors. These ain't, what are you talking about? <laughs> you see any teepees around him? No. See a house. <laughs> a fortified house with ramparts. What's, what's up with that? Look, the Lenape. It's from the pronation. Excuse me, it's from the pronation. So here go another picture of uh, more from the Algonquin with the imperial colors on, the red and the green. That's a coincidence, right? And this is a Phoenician, and this is a boy from Mali. So I'm supposed to believe all of these are different people when they all come from the same cultural background. Look, look, they're making a deal. Look at the more right here. Running. Look at this more. M2. With the white Mameluke slaves, look. <laughs> See the white, the white Daniel Boone type? He owned him. He the one who trained him to know how to live here. So get the book Wild Irishmen and Frenchified Indians to get more on, on all of that. Anybody have any last questions? These are the only lodges we're supposed to be a part of. <laughs> all of us is in one of these, whether we know it or not. See? The tree, the same tree you see on the flag. This is where all the Masonic lodges come from.
is how we used to do them. It's how we used to just move them from one part of the land to the other. <laughs> just like it said in the Circle 7. Took everything from them except their nakedness. Oh, that Shriner guy. Yeah, he um he just showed up. We were at an event with some young Moors. This is the only more they showed in Roots. See him for a second. In the original Roots. Yeah, but this Moor rolled up and he, um, well, excuse me, this, this Rokozoi rolled up and we were there chilling. And then the next thing you know, um, it was after the Kill Ripken set. And uh, as we were there, he saw us all out in the feathers and got mad happy. And he was like, yo, I'll be right back. And he came back, and went in his car across the street with his trunk. I say, yo, if this dude come out with a fez, I'm going to bug out. And yes, he did. He came back with a little fez. And right when he came around us, he stood on the square and then, like, threw it on. Almost like a magic trick. And it went, like, right to the side. And then from there, he just started, um, <laughs> he started, like, buck dancing. He started talking to us about, um, how he wanted to sign his property over to the to the Moors. It was like last year. I think I got on, it was on tape. I'm a next class, I'm gonna play it in the beginning, so you see. And um he just he just laid it all out there and it was good that the young Moors saw it, because he's an old dude. And he looked like Ralph Crandon. He had the suspenders and the belly and all that. He just started buck dancing, he had to put the fez on and it was tilted to the side. I kept calling the Muslim son. I was like, well, yeah, Muslim son, because you know they you you respect the Moors. So he was like, okay, yeah, y'all Moors. And he's like, yeah, I had some gin in my house. I needed to get moved out, but they hit me down at City Hall and started going in. It was amazing. Like I said, next week I'm gonna play. Yeah, this is the Khoisan on the left, on the right. And then these are the ones in Southeast Asia. And then these are the ones in Algeria. See, it's a connection, but each one has a distinct place based upon a place of origin. But they were all under the protection of the old empire. We all looked out for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, he just, um, he really showed out. This is the original, this is where they got the flag from, from, from Mexico. And what I showed you with the, with the more being Aiden, the Biscogne. This is a, basically the origin of all that, where the higher self meets the lower self. So yeah, Mors, again, this is Mozart. The original, and then this is the reprint that they made during the Renaissance, or after the Renaissance, or whatever. Um, that's always a good thing to get if you can get it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anybody have any last questions? This is also Tovan Bay, what they call Beethoven. That's peace. You gotta keep those connections up, inshallah. We even had it in music, we just didn't know. This was a group called the Turbans. I forget this group's name. This is actually the Duke of Burgundy. This is actually the Duke of Austria. I'm gonna start, uh, when I show these pictures, show, say who they really are. This is actually the Duke of Burgundy. And this is actually the Duke of Austria. All 
or was. This is right here. This one was a bust of Toussaint. See what I'm saying? Finding all of these images of Toussaint with fezzes and turbans on. This is, they said this is an image of uh, a bust of him. So again, um, Um, I'm not sure which one you're talking about. Picture you're talking about. Anybody else? Um, those are, you know, they would definitely set on purpose, but, you know, at certain times, bars and stuff like that got to burn in order to get new seeds and stuff. So I think by the time they burn out and these people want to set up what they want to set up there, they ain't going to be able to do it. But, you know, the natural disasters like that bring huge benefits to the actual land, believe it or not. I don't think it's right if they set them, but at the same time, um, the native more from this is from Chicago on the right, and then one from the Congo. Excuse me, on on the left, and then one on the Congo from the right. I'm sure it is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And hurricanes and stuff. Will, kick a chemtrail's ass. And to show and prove what I said about um, Turkey or Tuscarora, which we now call North Carolina, and the Ottomans being a Moorish tribe of Mauritanians in Mexico, we already proved that this is an old Turkish map from the 1500s. Um, the divine creed is a good thing to reinforce for us to all learn, same way we learn Pledge of Allegiance and all that. Divine creed is really dope. This is also Sadegipe del Rey here in, in Brazil, which translates mean from or belonging to the king of Egypt. From a map from 18th. 85. Showing again Egypt or parts of Egypt being here in America first. All right. So again, thank you guys for coming through. Thank you guys for uh, participating. If you have any other questions, you can hit me up. Savelle at hotmail.com. And uh, I hope it was uh, informative, inshallah. Well, yeah, look into some of that stuff that we talked about. Especially when you look at some of these crests to these old to these states. They change them now to make them look white, but this is what they used to look like. Bamboo. You know, they put the Habsburg cross on it, see? Again, thank you for coming through. If you have any more questions, just let me know. And, uh, you know, let's stay wise and alert, man. Let's put this stuff in order. There's a lot to 
be able to do, especially now with the homeschooling and vaccination thing. There's going to have to be some sort of class action situation that goes down, especially as, as well. Next week, I'm going to show some stuff dealing with what they're trying to paint these rogue moors <laughs> as while these school shooters is going crazy. So, inshallah, we'll get to it. Lastly, it was the Moorish Port in Opalaka in 1890. You know, turned it into the city hall now. Act like this white boy built it. This is what it looked like in 1890. That's how close <laughs> we are to where we were. Where we were. You know what I'm saying? So, thank you guys for the support. In Rowena, Eos, Roma, Moros, Falconia, Malut, Locus, Fortisitis, Opsita. In other words, to the end of Rome, Moors, praise Allah, Moors, and let's do our thing. Peace. Nah, but I'll check it out. <laughs>